Patriots Nation. What's going on? Brian Phillips, your host here on Deep Down the Middle. Welcome to episode four. Joined by my co-host, Ryan Kieran. Ryan, how we doing, bud? Uh, we are living in a Mookie Betts-less world, uh, and I don't enjoy it. Gross. Gross is yes. what it is. Um, guys, slow week this week. Not a ton going on around the NFL. Uh, no. Not a ton going on around the Patriots. Um, obviously, we've got big time, dra- you know, big draft stuff coming up with the combine right on the horizon. But kind of a slow week. Um, so we're going to have a fun little exercise here uh, on this episode of the pod. Um, but real quick, Ryan, how much of the XFL did you catch this weekend? Uh, maybe two and a half to three quarters across two different games, which is like two and a half to three quarters more than you, right? That Yes. That I watched negative 1% of the XFL this weekend. <laughs> All right. Um, so the only thoughts that I had on it, um, we're definitely not here to be making a broad sweeping, you know, decisions on it. Um, it seemed like at least on Twitter that the hype from even Saturday to Sunday died down really quickly, which is not the best sign, um, for its long-term sustainability. However, uh, I just wanted to touch on the kickoff rules where they have the offense or the kicking team and receiving teams, non-kicker and receiver line up like 10 yards apart on the opposing teams, like 35 and 25 or whatever it was. Uh, and they can't move until the receiver catches the ball. All in on that. Like that a lot. Thought yeah, that was a really I, good idea. I saw a picture of that. Now it gave me like, like it looked like it had serious like Red Rover energy. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm anticipating there's got to be like some more big plays, right? Some more. Uh, right. More, you'd, you'd, you'd think that some creative uh, play calling or or design. That it's a new opportunity yeah, for, right. for coaches to it's, scheme up. It's essentially, it's essentially a big, big running play. Mina Kimes talked about it on ESPN Daily, um, how, you know, creative coordinators can essentially run blocking schemes. Like you can run outside zone off a kickoff now uh, and yeah, that's things like true. that. Yeah, that's pretty right. So. So, you know, the runway to create, like, wide-open lanes for huge returns isn't there, but the ability to get creative and also safer uh, is there, and I would love to see the NFL adopt some variation. of it. I think that if they want to save kickoffs, I think that's a great way to do it. I think that was the best. In my limited viewing, that was the best thing I saw by far. Is there a chance that after one week of a combined, between you and me, a combined two and a half to three quarters of actual viewership and all of our great vast knowledge of the XFL. Now, do you see long-term success for the XFL? I think it might get through this season and at least like have a chance at the second one, which is in, in terms of like, you know, startup leagues history is like, you know, top one percentile of success. I can't, I can't really see this becoming like the new G league to the NBA's, you know, NBA. Um, but I can, I could see it, you know, having a little bit of short term staying power. Okay. Um, well, that's pretty much all, that's pretty much all we're going to go over as far as league wide football stuff. Um, we're going to jump right in. Thought we'd do a fun little exercise this week. Uh, with the Patriots being the oldest team in the NFL, we wanted to do something where we looked at around, just around the league, um, and took stock in the league's young talent and the best young talent out there guys on rookie contracts undrafted free agent contracts so what we did was put together we're going to do a little quick draft here five guys each you're starting your own nfl franchise uh with five players like i said on rookie contracts or undrafted free agent contracts ryan your job was to randomize who gets to pick first yes um tell me your strategy and then uh tell me who is who, who gets the pick of the litter here Okay, and so other note uh, that we just want to make sure that we're hitting, we're not including quarterbacks here. No quarterbacks. No quarterbacks. No quarterbacks. Because then, you know, the easy, you know, two of Pat Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson are the first three picks, and that's no fun. So no quarterbacks. No quarterbacks. Uh, So we are going – my thought process, and also uh, you're taking on their live contract. So if they're in the last year of their rookie deal, um, as in entering it, so anyone who's about to be a free agent – for example, Chris Jones, not eligible because he's about to be a free agent, even though he's technically on his rookie contract for like two more weeks. That's a good point. Um, but so anyone who's entering the last year for the 2020 season is eligible and you'll need to be giving them an extension if you want to keep them long term versus if you just took a rookie, they still have three or four years left on there. Um, so my strategy here is I'm looking to fortify 
um, key positions. I don't have any running backs on my list. You're not going to see a running back get taken. You are more than likely not going to see interior offensive linemen get taken or linebackers get taken. I'm focusing on the key positions where difference makers matter um, because I'm also assuming that the rest of my team outside of these five are, you know, league average players, the Kirk Cousins of each position outside of that. So I want those league average players at positions where I can scheme them and hide them into greater success. Uh, and then I did a randomized order and this leads in perfectly. So Brian, you are going to have the first pick in each round. So let me know what your strategy is and then make your first pick. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. I'm not thrilled about having the first pick. <laughs> we both talked about it. We thought there would be a consensus first overall pick specifically um, in my opinion, with this guy's contract, him being uh, him with only one year of service in the league. He's not my favorite. Yeah, dude. He's, he, he's not my favorite dude in the world uh, off the field. But uh, Nick Bosa has got to be yep. the hand, the hands down consensus number one pick here yep. with these parameters. Um, we yep. saw how disruptive he is. We saw uh, we, we saw him this year completely take the league by storm from a from a three down perspective um they they did a really nice job of getting him and matched up on uh on all different sides uh, you know all, all different positions along the offensive line he mainly he'll attack he'll attack the best usually the left tackle the best pass blocking uh, option on that offensive line and, and really uh he made he made quick work of just about everybody this year the guy's got Ooh. hustle the guy can the guy's gonna be in, in, insane uh I remember coming out when they were talking about Joey Bosa and they said, well, just wait uh, until you see Nick. Um, and Joey Bosa is a guy who qualifies for this list too. Of course, his contract situation is a little different, but, uh, but yeah, I think the pick has got to be Nick Bosa. You solidify that front seven uh, moving forward and then, uh, and everything around your defense gets a little bit easier when you have a Nick Bosa. Yeah. All right. That was, that was also who I would have taken first overall. Um, not who I would want to take first overall, but I think that had to be the first overall pick. So it turns out we were on the same page there. Uh, I'm in a bit of an interesting position because uh, I'm going to go with my first pick, not necessarily who I think is the best player, who's going to be the best player on my team. But I think that in terms of the parameters that we're setting, the drop off from this player to the rest of the options at his position is so significant uh, that I want to make sure that I don't lose him out on you, especially because I'm going to probably be focusing the rest of my draft towards the other side of the ball. Uh, at least for the majority. So I'm going to go with Ronnie Stanley with my first pick. Uh, the le the Ravens left tackle uh, had a bit of a slow start to his career. Former uh, sixth overall pick was not great as a rookie. Was okay in his second year, and he exploded this year. First team All Pro left tackle. He's still super young. He's still got uh, two years left on his rookie contract. So you're not paying him until after next year, um, or even after the year after if you let him play it completely out. But you're not even probably extending him until after this year. Um, so you're still getting him for cheap. You're solidifying that left side for your Kirk Cousins, who does not know how to handle pressure. Uh, and I don't think that there is a rookie contract tackle who is particularly close to his level, unless I'm completely missing someone right now. Uh, so my first pick is Ronnie Stanley, and I'm feeling good that the left side of my offense is where I'm going to be able to run to, and also I don't have to worry about my QB's blind side. Okay, I like the pick. Uh, I like the pick from the sense that offensive line play, line plays at an all time low right now, and the tackle mm -hmm. position, specifically left tackle, um, is is dry, man. It's dry right. out there. Uh, so yep. nice, nice pick there. I think the only other tackle probably we'd be looking at, even considering to be on this list, would probably be Ryan Ramchick, right from New Orleans, right tackle. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Really, really good player. Um, but he, and he's also about to be, you know, looking for that contract. So true. Um, okay, so I am. Uh, yeah, we're not doing a snake style just because it's only the two of us. We're only doing five players here. Um, man, I'm so tempted. The, the, the reason I didn't want the number one pick is because I couldn't. It. You can't possibly in a in a, in a format like this go twice. You can't go back to back edge guys. So. You can't. Uh, I, I mean, I, uh, I mean, yeah, you could. Um, okay, so I don't know. This might be a little bit out of left field here, but I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Chris Godwin, wide receiver. Um, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, okay. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Uh, the guy was an absolute monster this mm -hmm. year. Um, mm -hmm. Complete monster. Uh, really, really took the reins from Mike Evans in that offense. Obviously, Mike Evans, unbelievable player, but uh, a lot of really sharp guys. 
especially around the fantasy industry, which should not be discounted because there's a lot of sharp minds in the fantasy industry, uh, pointed right. at pointed at Chris Godwin and said, this guy is, is set for a breakout year. And, and Ryan and I were both guys who liked Chris Godwin coming out of the yep. draft. He was the best pure route runner in that class, um, and he's got the size and the speed. He put it all together this year, even with a quarterback throwing 30 p- uh, picks. Um, Chris Godwin is an absolute machine, and uh, according to Pro Football Focus, he was their most valuable player when they came up with their new their new WAR metric, uh, trying to put together, which is it's, it's such a tough thing to do uh, mm-hmm. in 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 football, obviously, um, it, you know, compared to baseball. But he was the guy who topped their, I believe, he was the guy that topped their WAR metric uh, this year. So uh, Chris Godwin, yeah, that's 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 my dude uh, rolling forward. Only one more year, uh, excuse me, only two more years of eligibility on his contract I'm, i might have to go back and check that real quick but um but uh because he wasn't a first rounder you won't have that fifth year option but um yeah now i've got my deep downfield weapon i've got my i've got my mike thomas-esque type player moving forward uh on the offense for whatever quarterback i have yeah uh and so a little in, a little behind the scenes uh we initially had started this with a different format and chris godwin was not going to be able to be a consideration for me under that format so he missed my list but that was a great pick i'm going to speed this up a little bit because we're already falling behind our pace here so um, this, com- this, this coming and, from a mile away oh, oh yeah 100 but so i'm gonna go uh other side of the ball i'm gonna go a division rival um the not stefan gilmore all pro cornerback this year i'm gonna go trey white uh the cornerback from uh buffalo he is he was uh, also known as uh, who Buffalo traded down and took after Kansas City traded up for Pat Mahomes. Um, but he is an inarguable top five cornerback in the league right now. He's only He just finished his second season. He's got three years left on his rookie contract. Already a first-team All-Pro at a very tough position to come out and uh, play well on as he play well in as a young player. Um, cornerback is, you know, with, the, with the prevalence of wide receivers, having a corner who can lock down their number one is – of the utmost importance and he does that better than just about anyone in the league already at a super young age on a very cheap contract so that was an easy number two pick he probably if i'm ignoring uh you know the drop-offs at position he probably would have been my first overall pick really like uh, uh, yeah second uh, after both re- really good pick uh especially with with all the research out there talking about how uh coverage is more important there's that new debate is coverage right, more coverage. important than pass rush uh so it looks like that's where that's where you're going with that um yeah, yeah. Troy, Troy White is sick okay. okay round three of five here because I can't believe he's still on the board uh it's 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 unbelievable I'm gonna go uh and it's tough oh man this is such this is such a tough one because there's only one year left on his deal uh but the possibilities of adding George Kittle to my roster and what oh, we can do so. now, what we can do now on offense is, uh, is going to be nasty. We're going to be able to be super multiple. Um, the 11 person, uh, good, good luck, you know, defending our 11 personnel. Look, um, I'll take one year of George Kittle here in round three. Uh, mm-hmm. we guys all saw him all year long dominate the NFL. Um, he's the nastiest run blocking tight end we've had since Gronk and, one of the one of the best run blocking tight ends I've seen, uh, and the guys the guy's just awesome. He's so so fun to to watch, and uh, he's going to put butts in seats for this new uh, startup franchise. Ryan, who is your third round pick? Okay, so here's why I thought it was interesting that you said in a format like this you can't go back to back edge rusher because edge rusher is inarguably more important than the position that I'm about to go back to back on because I just took Trey White and I'm just going to lock down the other side of that field too and take Jari Alexander. Ooh. Um. Yeah, Jari Alexander is. We talk about how Trey Wright is already Trey Wright is already a first team uh, All Pro. Jari Alexander was probably the bit one of the biggest Pro Bowl snubs this year. Uh, he is just insane. Uh, they he has speed. He has coverage skills. He has ball skills. Uh, him swagger. and Trey White. He has swagger. Him and Trey White are like everything that you love to see at at a cornerback position. Um, I know a lot of people were pounding the table for him in New England when he was coming out, and we took uh, Isaiah Wynn and Sony Michelle instead. But uh, just absolutely incredible player for the Packers, and I just I don't have to worry about outside receivers anymore, uh, and I can get away with you know an average slot corner, knowing that no one's going to be able to get outside on me. Um, so yeah, that's that's the, that's the end of round three. Okay, um, another guy that I, I'm. I'm absolutely floored is still on the board. And it's probably, well, after you went Ronnie Stanley with your first pick, I knew he would probably be available. But uh, I, I 
and I didn't think I was going to go so much offense here. I honestly didn't. I did not think I would have three offensive players on this on this team. I, I was I was determined to be defensive heavy. Uh, but so leading the Colts player off my list right yeah, now. Yeah, I've got to go with uh, with Big Q, um, Quentin yep. Nelson, uh, the best uh, the best young interior offensive lineman, probably the best young lineman in the league at this point. Um, mm-hmm. The guy, the guy's nasty. Uh, what back to back years of all pro, uh, of uh, of some sort First, of all pro yeah. status. Yeah. Um, it, what more can you say? He, he's a complete mauler, and he's able. You, you're able to get your playmakers out into space with a guy like him, just like we see uh, the Patriots with, with Shaq Mason, um, getting getting him out on in, on these outside zones and uh, and and in the screen game. Um, and yeah, Quentin Nelson's the man. So uh, I'm all set on offense, Ryan. Who is your fourth pick in this draft? Um, so, oh, okay. So I just realized that who I was going to take. As I was about to read his name, I was like, I think he might have gotten an extension. Devontae Adams is not still on his rookie contract. Um, Correct. So I am going to go with. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look. See, this is so tough because there's. Uh, it's time. I need. I need a pass rusher, but there's still so many available because pass rushers are so deep right now. But I still think I'm going to get one off the board. I am going to go with. Uh, Josh Allen, uh, the Jaguars seventh overall pick from this year. Uh, what pushes him over a Joey Bosa is uh, Joey Bosa's injury history. I'm gonna have to pay Joey Bosa soon. Josh Allen just finished up the first year of his deal, already has double sacks. Um, and I he's he's uh, he's athletic enough that if you shouldn't ever have to ask him to drop back into coverage, but if you do need him to drop in coverage, he's able to. He's already great at rushing the passer. You've got four more years of team control at pretty cheap. Uh, so Josh Allen's going to gonna rush off the edge for me. Interesting. While, uh, while, Trey, while Trey Wright and Jerry Alexander are making no one available, so he has 10 seconds to get to the quarterback every single snap. Super interesting. Um, yeah, you got a, you got a young core there. Um, okay, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to round out uh, my squad. I'm um, going to try to keep a little balance here. Uh, I went pass rush with the first overall pick. And to round out my my squad of five, uh, I think he's that much better than uh, than the next guy on at his position, and uh, it's really between these two, uh, between Derwin James and, mm-hmm. and and Jamal Adams. And man, I have just watched Jamal Adams ball out for three oh, straight no. years. Oh no! Oh no! I am gonna go. Oh no! I'm going to go with Jamal Adams oh, and, no. and gift Derwin <laughs> to somebody no, else. No! 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 Two more years of Jamal Adams under my belt. Uh, yes, I know this is sacrilege, Ryan, uh, because me and Ryan were both big Derwin James guys. Doesn't mean I'm still not, I, but man, I can't. Jamal Adams fits. He he fits this. Uh, he fits this toughness, this grit. Uh, persona that my team is is uh, is harnessing here with Kittle and Quentin Nelson and and uh, and, and Nick Bosa. So, man, I know sacrilege going with the New if, York. If Jack. you want, if, if but if you want someone that's just going to get beat off play action and in coverage, why don't you ask Troy Polamalu to come out of retirement? <laughs> hey, man, he 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 pick sixed. He picked six, the quarterback of the future. Okay, and Jared. Sanders I thought here. I thought Derwin James was the lock pick there, and I was gonna say this is what makes it even crazier. I was ready to say hot take Jamal Adams. If I was gonna take a safety here, it wouldn't even be Jamal Adams. I I I like Justin Simmons out from Denver. I like Justin Reed from t- Houston. I think Jamal Adams is a great player and also one of the most overrated players in football right now. Uh, I think he's already been grandfathered into that all pro perennial pro bowler. And I don't understand. I think he is a very good player, solid player. I think that there are, are at least three other young safeties that I would take over. him. He, here's my, here's my rebuttal. No, <laughs> you're wrong. Uh, all right. No, but I want, uh, here's my, here's my, my thinking. We know how critical the safety position is. Jamal Adams is not going to be my my guy rotating high. He's not going to be my free safety. He's going to be he's going to be my Pat Chung. He's going to be my and jack of all trades. And, and see, that's where I'm saying. And this goes with Quentin Nelson too. Uh, where if if we're only getting five, you know, young superstars, and the rest are average players, True. I can I can find that in Pat Chung still. I can I can find an offensive guard who can you know I can cover up, especially with Ronnie Stanley next to him. And that's where I kind of fall off. With Quentin Nelson, he's unquestionably the best player. With Jamal Adams, I think I think he's he's becoming pretty overrated. But uh, 
All right. We're, we're, de- we're, uh, we're already running long again. So let's run into, so this last pick, uh, I, I can, I, if, when you are screaming at your, uh, in your car, about which wide receiver should have been taken over this man. Just know that I'm trying to think off the top of my head because I was ready to take the Devontae Adams and realized I couldn't, and I am shook. So I'm sure I am missing someone right now who is an obvious pick. But instead, uh, I'm going with the 2019 receiving touchdowns leader, Kenny Galladay. Ooh, I love uh, that. Yes. I was not high on Kenny Galladay coming out of the draft. I believe I have a quote out where I said Kenny Galladay of the 100 or so players I ranked that year. That was my heaviest draft year. Uh, was the most uh, o- overvalued player from where I had him ranked to where he got picked. Uh, and he is becoming one of the best young wide receivers in the game. He's a jump ball guy. Uh, he's the type of guy, honestly, who might give me- my team a little bit of trouble where I've got two shorter corners in Trey White and Jerry Alexander. So let's just get him on the same team. Uh, let them learn how to beat those guys in coverage. Um, so I'm just going to recap my team real quick. I've got Ronnie Stanley at left tackle. Uh, I've got dueling boundary corners in Tredavious White and Jari Alexander. I've got Josh Allen rushing off the edge, and I got Kenny Galladay uh, coming off my uh, as my wide receiver one for Kirk Cousins to just throw Yolo balls off play action. Yeah, we've got uh, my, my graphics department here, uh, <laughs> my with my beautiful handwriting. Um, yeah, nice looking squad. Uh, I I think mine would take yours to the woodshed. Um, uh-huh. When Nick Nick Bosa, uh, just to recap mine real quick, Nick Bosa uh, in round one, Chris Godwin, uh, wide receiver for t- the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, George Kittle, don't know if you've heard of him, uh, Quentin Nelson, and the extremely overrated, already regretting it, Jamal Adams. So, um, yeah, I went, I'm pretty sure I won. I'm Who knows? Who is to say, but I won. Um, all right, guys. This week, I do not have a, uh, a draft prospect or free agent acquisition uh, for you, but Ryan is going to give you uh, a draft prospect he has his eye on for the Patriots. Ryan, who is that man? Yeah, let's keep this real quick because uh, there's already been plenty to talk about him, especially recently. So I just want on the record that I was on this weeks ago. This is not hearing other people say it and jumping on board. I just did not get my take publicly out in time, but I have been on this. I will... I will tweet the DMs to prove it if I need to. Uh, I've been on this for weeks. Jacob Eason, uh, quarterback out of Washington, formerly quarterback from Georgia. Um, I like him better than Justin Herbert. I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, he's got a ton of arm talent. His mental side needs a lot of work. Go check out uh, our colleague Mark Schofield's uh, RSP on YouTube of Jacob Eason. He does a really good job um, di- diagramming the concerns that he has about Eason from a mental side. Um, my argument there is that he was, he started as a freshman, a true freshman at Georgia, lost out, lost on the job to Jacob Fromm, who was a much safer prospect or much safer college player at the time, uh, transferred to Washington, had, had to sit out year, started this year. So he really has like a year and a half of starts under his belt that were as a freshman and as a senior. So he's still inexperienced. He still has time to, uh, learn if he gets the right coaching, learn that mental side of the game. And I feel more confident in him cleaning up that side than, say, Justin Herbert cleaning up some of his mechanics that lead to inaccuracies. Um, I think he's the best bet of the second-tier QBs. Ideally, you trade down from 23, pick up some more assets, and then take them either at the end of the first round or top of the second round, whatever. Um, but if if I'm taking a quarterback, uh, whether Tom Brady's here or not, I like him better as a developmental guy than uh, Justin Herbert. I think there's enough there to actually root on that I would take that over like a lottery ticket like Jordan Love, who I also don't mind as a lottery ticket. Um, And like Jake Fromm is about as safe as it gets, but also as low upside as it gets. Like I I tweeted it out, Jake Fromm is the equivalent of drafting a 78 overall rookie quarterback on Madden whose potential only gets him to like 81 overall. Like he is going to be who he is from the time he enters the league until the time he leaves. I think Jacob Eason has a lot of upside. Uh, I think that where he is right now is like above, say, a Ryan Mallett, who they were already intrigued in uh, years ago. I think that he shows some, he shows accuracy, he shows touch, he has ridiculous arm power. He's got decent athleticism. So you just clean up that mental side of the game, which I I am betting on comes with more experience since he was so inexperienced in college. Uh, and I think that you have a solid developmental quarterback. If you believe in de- developmental quarterbacks, which a lot of people don't, which I understand. But if you're if you're not getting Joe Burrow, if you're not getting Tua, I think for anyone, not just the Patriots, I think he's your next best bet. 
going to be a lot of uh, a lot of big boards getting adjusted when uh, when these combine numbers come in and we see these guys throwing to uh, throwing to air and throwing oh, yeah. to and and get, you know receivers being guarded by air. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, last thing, he's not the next Drew Blood, so a lot of people were saying that. Get that out of here. Yeah, gross. Gross. yeah, yeah gross. No, no. Um, stop, stop that comp right now. He's not the next Drew Blood. So fun episode, uh, fun little yeah. thing. You know, on, on a slow uh, slow news week. Um, next week we will bring you a more in-depth topic. Not quite sure what that's going to be yet, but uh, it'll be a little surprise for you guys. And other, other slow news weeks might break out something like this again too. It's always fun to just kind of do this these little theoretical fantasy experiments. For sure. Um, guys, go to patspulpit.com for all of your off-season Patriots needs. Uh, if you head over to their Twitter uh, handle right now we tweeted this out this little project this little exercise out uh, just a little bit ago before we started recording here so send us your five picks who who are you guys taking obviously me and ryan went back and forth in a little draft here uh, yeah. but pick any five rookie contracts obviously uh, non-quarterbacks let us know who your five are um fun little exercise uh yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do this uh this kind of thing every once in a while throughout the offseason mm-hmm. but um guys follow ryan at ryan underscore kieran that's k-e-i-r-a-n uh, mm-hmm. f- follow me while you're on there as well at b phillips underscore sb um and we will catch you guys next week all right go pats